Hey, Carol. I'm Gary, and uh, as you can see, behind me is my N gauge layer at Westmoreland. Um, I've got a couple of trains running uh, tonight, and uh, both of these are um, new purchases that I got with my uh, birthday and Christmas money over the last couple of months. So uh, I'll show you those in a bit more detail uh, later on. I also uh, got a nice um, bespoke Settle Carlisle 68 mug and uh, tonight it's filled with tea and not beer. So cheers. Um, for after the last video um, I would uh, leave the beer alone for this one and um, didn't want many many outtakes as last time. So in this week's uh, or this month's video uh, which is the March update um, we will uh, we'll see what I've got to up on the layout uh, unfortunately it's not a great deal nowhere near as much as I wanted to but um, that's been down to uh, drying times the materials that I've been using but also uh, been busy with lots of other things uh, some of which weren't sort of planned um, I'll also uh, show you the new purchases that you see going around now in a bit more detail and um, finally we'll uh, reveal who the competition winners are for the uh, uh, the paint rack and the um, the £25 Replitech voucher so uh, good luck with those as I said without further ado the well used phrase let's go over to the layout and uh, see what I've been up to okay so we're on the layout uh, to see what's been done since the last update uh, back in late December so uh, as you can see we've added this uh, point now which is what I was uh, intending to do in the uh, last update so I've moved the point as far this way as possible uh, under the bridge and then I've uh, put a new piece of track in here and then as you can see the siding goes all the way uh, back to uh, the other end of the quarry uh, just a single siding this time so I've just got a bit of tidying, to, tidying up to do around here um, these to fill in probably will extend this wall down to here and then put some um, sort of a, a gate here to uh, to block off the private siding and uh, obviously quite a bit of landscaping work to do there and then as you come into the quarry itself um, we've got the, the what will be the new quarry building um, so I've just done a bit of a mock up there with a paint pot in between uh, just to show roughly where that's going to be and the hopper will be over the top of these um, uh, ballast uh, ballast wagons and then the conveyor will come down and then there'll be a loading uh, shed here where the material the rock will be fed up into the crusher and then uh, dropped via the hopper into the uh, uh, into these wagons so still a bit to do there but you get the get the drift of what I'm doing with the with the quarry now um, so what else have I done? So if you come up to the top of uh, the tunnel, you'll notice, or possibly notice that all of the red or brown stones have disappeared or gone. Uh, and what I actually did, I painted these up with sort of a gray green sort of mix um, and painted all of those uh, brownie red stones. So I've done that. Uh, and then I've uh, painted over that with my usual water paint or water um, mixture, which is the clear model water from WWS. So when you paint it on, it's sort of this white, almost like a P thick PVA, um, and then it dries um, transparent with a bit of a sheen to it. Uh, unfortunately, with the 
with the cold weather it's taken absolutely ages to dry between each coat. I think I've put about four or five coats on here. Um, so yeah, it's uh, been quite a task getting all this uh, done. Uh, what I've also done from the last update is all of these stones have been put in place and all individually glued uh, with uh, PVA uh, and went over with paint again, sort of a greeny grey mix, went over all the stones and then applied about four or five layers of this uh, model water. So that runs all the way down and then under the um, fire duct. So as you'll see, that's what it looked like before with the red stone. So uh, when I was gluing these in place with PVA, I just blocked it off at this end with some tape. And unfortunately, it's taken the paint off. So just a bit of touching up to do um, there. So as I said, not, not as much done as I wanted to. I was hoping to have all the static grass and everything in place for this video, which again is, uh, is, is, is late, later than what I, I wanted really. Um, but what I've also done is put in these um, dry stone walls and the idea with these uh, stones that I've stuck down is it's to give it sort of a, um, a run down look. So similar to uh, the photos on the screen now. So uh, I've just give those uh, a coat of grey paint and uh, just ready to go on to the next phase which will be um, giving them a, a black wash and then some dry brushing with uh, white paint. So I'll be videoing that and put that into the uh, uh, next video. So moving to this side of the viaduct, you may or may notice that I've put these um, stone walls in um, and I've also backfill them with uh, sculptor mold and then put these walls on which are basically it's the sort of flexible um, uh, embossed plaster card and then I gave them a, a coat of uh, sort of magnolia paint and then I've, I've painted them up as you see here. I've done the same on the uh, the viaduct so uh, that's that's pretty much uh, all finished on this face. I've still got more to do on the inner faces and the top of the uh, the arches. And then I've put another um, uh, wall in here. As I said, the beauty with the uh, plastic card is you can obviously bend it to you know, suit the shape. So I stuck that in place with uh, uh, a hot glue gun give it the shape and then I backfill as I say with um, sculptor mould and then give it a, a paint over with the, the, the muddy brown. Um, so how I got this sort of technique of colouring of the uh, the viaduct, um, a lot of trial and error really and uh, it's basically sort of dry brushed four or five different sort of brown, greys and dark colours um, over the top of what is the uh, the base coat uh, that you see here and uh, by dry dry brushing and building up the layers um, you you leave the sort of mortar or the lighter colour underneath um, rather than painting all of the stone and then going back over um, with, with sort of a wash so this technique seemed to work um, well for me really. Um, so I've just got to finish, as I say, finish off under the arches, as you see there. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's uh, how we did that. So I've just taken a video of while style was preparing the uh, the viaduct. Um, so. We can, uh, we can just move on to that now.
Okay, so hopefully you uh, got a, a better idea of how I uh, sort of applied the colours um, to the viaduct and the other stonework. And uh, I'll be doing that also on um, on the uh, inner portals uh, of the, the viaduct as well. So just going to finish that off. Um, so what else is next? Uh, I'm going to look at the stream or the beck which runs down uh, here. And uh, this is sort of the loop that I'll be going for. So you can see from this uh, photograph, this is quite a steep sort of stream with gray stones and um, lots of uh, uh, grass all the way up to the edges of the stream. And then uh, lots of tufts and so on. Um, stones scattered around so that, that's sort of the look I will be uh, sort of going for down down here um, I'm probably also going to add some more water and then I'm going to put some white paint on some some white sort of lines where the waterfall is and, and so on so that'll look uh, a lot better than it, it does uh, it does now and then as we come down into the viaduct area where this path is here that you see um, this is what I'm looking to do sort of here so you can see this is a path under one of the arches so I'm going to do sort of a muddy muddy track with grass and then um, yeah that'll be uh, that'll be what I'm going to do there hopefully I've captured sort of the stone colour and um, finally just just to give you an idea what I'm going to do in the surrounding area with the grasses so uh, again that's the viaduct on the top of the embankments I'm going to use uh, or put lots of tufts sort of here at the, at the top and then there'll be as you see here where this um, tree hit tree is I'm going to look to put a tree sort of here and then all of this will be uh, will be grass um, Sort of as per the uh, the photograph, so that's that's the plan uh, that I'm on with uh, on with next. Okay, so looking at the other side of the viaduct, as I mentioned here, uh, I'm going to um, copy some photographs or try and replicate some photographs of dry stone walls that have uh, sort of collapsed um, due to uh, disrepair. Um, but here I'm going to put a, a small uh, barn and uh, so I got some inspiration for another photograph that I found on the uh, on the internet as you can see not not it's not a gill viaduct but a similar viaduct and then we've got a small derelict uh, barn or outbuilding uh, just overlooking the the viaduct so I'm going to do something very similar uh, here and uh, Again, surround that with uh, tufts and so on. And then we've got the dry stone wall, which is here, but obviously in a, a much uh, worse state. So that's what I'm going to do um, at that side of the uh, of the viaduct. Okay, so moving on from the outbuilding, this is the final part of the, uh, the layout update. Uh, on the uh, the layout itself to what I've to what I've done for the last couple of months, and that was to build up this uh, this embankment with this stone wall. So similar principles what I did um, with with these uh, these walls, whereby I've actually put a piece of polystyrene behind and then built up this uh, layer of um, sculptor mold, which uh, took probably nearly a week to. Uh, to dry believe it or not um, so that's sort of ready now to get the scenic applied to it and um, that sort of embankment and wall is taken from the Helifield station so that's where there is the signal gantry that goes over the line um, onto or in between these these two lines so that's that's really the first um, part of the station even though it's scenery that I'll be uh, sort of uh, replicating uh, 
Okay, just wanted to share with you um, some of the purchases I've made recently with my uh, Christmas and uh, birthday money that uh, family kindly uh, uh, gave me. So the first of these purchases is a local that I've uh, wanted for quite a long while. It, it features so extensively on the um, Settling Carlisle line and that's the, uh, an 8F. So I uh, managed to pick this one up from eBay, but it was uh, actually a brand new uh, Graham Farish model. And um, as you can see, it's got the early um, British Railways uh, emblem on the uh, on the tender, and this is one of the new Farish ones with the with the detail and the um, cab detail. So what else have I uh, have I got? I'll just move the ATF on. It's got a nice creep speed. Um, I'll just move that on. You can see sort of my next. Uh, purchase which are these three uh, Graham Farish uh, cattle wagons and these uh, as you can see are quite uh, heavily weathered and um, they've been individually um, painted up as well with um, replacement or old planks as, as well so uh, yeah really pleased with uh, with those, so they came in one of the uh, Graham Farish sort of uh, triple packs that they uh, they sell. And uh, just moving the logo on. So next purchase was from eBay again, and these were well, I think were a real bargain. And again, something I've been on the lookout for for a while, and uh, got these for a really good price. They were. To be fair, I think they were they were brand new. They've never been out of the um, the box. Another Graham Farish uh, triple set, and um, as you can see, they're quite heavily, nicely weathered um, cement wagons. Again, these have uh, I've got I've seen these on photographs on locals from the 50s and 60s on the Settled Carlisle line. So uh, again, trying to replicate wherever possible the low coals and rolling stock um, that run on the, on the line in the 50s and 60s. So uh, really pleased um, with these Farish wagons as well. Okay, so these are my other set of purchases. So these were really bought with uh, birthday money, as the other was, others were Christmas money. <laughs> As it matters, they all go into the same uh, uh, model railway pot. So uh, this is the second of the locos, and this is the Graham Farish uh, 4MT. And um, this is 76079, as you can see. And uh, yeah, just wanted um, a 4MT, not, not necessarily a loco that did run directly on the Settle and Carlisle line, but um, was a loco that was seen um, uh, in abundance around the Helifield uh, area. Um, so, yeah, that me that um, convinced me to uh, to uh, to buy it. Didn't need much convincing. So, what else have I got? I'll just move that on. So these were the final. Uh, two purchases and these are a pair of um, Dapple uh, Dogfish uh, Ballast Wagons. So uh, got these new again um, and these are really for the quarry really. Uh, thought it would make sense for the limestone quarry to uh, be producing um, limestone ballast uh, with the new uh, hopper building that I showed you earlier on. Okay, so that just about brings my uh, purchases um, to an end. Hopefully you like what I've purchased with, uh, with my money.
Okay, so let's just bring in the video to a close, really. Uh, just remains for me to wish the two competition winners congratulations. If you would like to uh, get in touch with me, either via the comments or on Messenger, via my Facebook page, then um, we can sort out the posting of the paintbrush rack and uh, sorting out the uh, £25 voucher to spend with Nigel at Replitech on the 3D printed models. Just uh, remains for me to say uh, goodbye, happy modelling and see you soon and uh, hopefully uh, it won't be as long uh, next time. Alright, see you later, bye.